With a win of yesterday 2-0, we made at least one person happy. We are speaking about the little Filippo, the grandson of Max Allegri, that asked his nonno the day before to stop winning with only 1-0. Yesterday, clean sheet. Yesterday, two goals scored by the Bianconeri. At least he's happy. But the big question is, we, Juventini, are we happy with the 2-0? Are we happy with the horrible? Because yes, it was horrible. The horrible performance of yesterday. We'll try to speak about that and much more in today's video. Maximum of likes, subscribe to the channel. We start. Ciao Juventini of the world, my name is Giuseppe, welcome back on the channel, I hope you're all doing well, I told you we have to speak about the post-game Spezia Juve, we have to speak about some individuals like Perin, ready to be the starter of Juventus, we have to speak about Moïse Keane, is he improving, but also the fantastic performance of our number 22, Angel Di Maria. I told you we will debrief the horrible performance on the field, but first let me start speaking about even more horrible, the performance of some supporters yesterday off the field because this is something that I really want to condemn I really want to fight against it because if we were speaking about the happy Filippo the grandson of Max Allegri I think that we have to speak about a sad a hurt Filippo. Filippo from Serbia, we are speaking about Filip Kostic, our assistant that yesterday war, was taken as target by the some supporters of Spezia being called out with disgusting words. I will not repeat them here but also Paredes when he was about to take a corner kick called Hijo de and I will also not finish the sentence and then Moiskin. Moiskin boot before the game in pre-game but also during the game. Guys, I don't want to rank them because all of them are equally disgusting it has to stop and it's not a message that i'm launching to only anti-juve supporters but all of us let's look at ourselves and let's stop doing these kind of things now it has to stop it really has to stop now speaking about individualities before going into the game of yesterday i really wanted to asking you one question because I know there are some players that we like, there are some players that we don't like. For example, Rugani is a player that is less liked by the fans. Look, yesterday I saw a lot of beautiful stats comparing the performances by Chesney and by Perin, showing how great Perin was doing. I didn't see the same stats for Rugani. Rugani played four games in Serie A, zero goals conceded, four consecutive clean sheets for R, number 28. This is something that has to be reflected. When we are doing the stats and comparing, let's try to be as objective as possible. And that's why I took Moïse Keane as a reference, because yesterday he scored his fifth goal in Serie A, equalizing what he did last season. Last season he needed 32 games in Serie A to score 5 goals. This season he needed 21 goals. Is it enough for Moiskin? No. Are we expecting better from Moiskin? Yes. Is he still missing too many sitters? Absolutely yes. Yesterday again and it's not the first time. He needs so many attempts before scoring a goal. And this is something that he needs to improve much more. A player that we bought for and signed for more than 30 million euro needs to pay back then we have to reconsider also the minutes that he's playing because he's not the starter of Juventus he's not the second starter of Juventus he's the third choice in attack for Juventus and for what he's doing we see some improvements enough no but if you are comparing with players like Giroud like Tammy Abraham that needs for example Giroud nearly 200 minutes per goal we have a uh, Tammy Abraham that needs 267 minutes to score a goal in average. Guys, then we are looking at our third choice that needs to that needs 160 minutes to score a goal. I see some improvement. He needs to do much better. He still has the potential. I am not happy. I am absolutely not happy. I am not defending, but I want to see also the good things that he's doing. And in terms of average minutes per goal, in terms of being there when we need him as a third choice, he's doing much better. So congratulations to Moïse Keane that yesterday was able to score his seventh goal with Juventus this season, equalizing his most goal scored with Juve that was in season 18-19. Will he reach the 10 goals this season? He needs three more. That's the big question. I think he needs to. Otherwise, he will be probably under the level of what we are all expecting from our number 18. Anyway, Juventus, despite everything, is still continuing to climb. To climb the ranking of Serie A, being seventh at the moment with a minus 15 points. We are there. We are there 
just behind Atalanta with Torino that still need to play today. Juventus is knocking at the door of Europe because we are at minus nine points from Atalanta. Pay attention, if Juventus is given back the 15 points, we are second in Serie A with 47 points. We are there in Champions League and we have to continue to win on the field. I know the performance was not beautiful and we will talk about it, but we have to continue, continue, continue until we have the final decision. The thing is what Juventus has maybe even the opportunity to do now, if you are looking at the other teams that are always slipping in a way like Atalanta yesterday we have to believe in our chances to do it to arrive in the top four even with the minus 15 deduction that's something that some people start to believe it can we do it it will be really her our job but who knows we have to continue to win to win to win anyway we have to do better than uh, yesterday because yesterday I tell you and also Max Allegri was really honest in saying it the performance of yesterday despite the win was much worse than the one versus not, but really much worse. I qualified it immediately without watching the game again. Qualified it one of our worst performances of the season. Easily the flop five performance, even if we won yesterday. We won, yes, but we were, die we were dying. We were dead yesterday. We were walking dead bodies on the field. Only Di Maria was at the level, and that's the title of Tutto Sport saying Di Maria is from another level, and I really want to emphasize it, yes, only Di Maria was from another level. He entered yesterday around the 56th, 57th minute and he changed that Juventus. Not only with his goal that he scored and made actually Spezia mentally collapse, they gave up after that 2-0, but he changed the game with his quality, with him being available to find the spots between the lines, something that we were missing. We were missing the quality and creativity of our left foot Argentinian. Yesterday, one goal, one ball recuperated, one long shot, uh, 11 beautiful passes succeeded. He missed five, of course. He was able to dribble his men. He did really, really well. He needed to score. These were his words. He really needed to score. And then at the zone, the question was asked him, are you the Winston Wolf of that Juventus? He said, I never watch Pulp Fiction. And for the one that never watched Pulp Fiction, guys, I watched it again yesterday evening with my son, who is Winston Wolf. He's the one that actually the experienced one that is called at a certain moment to solve the situation that was absolutely not looking great. To help the young guys there, the inexperienced young guys there and he's arriving and with his experience solving everything. So yes, he was probably the Winston Wolf of that situation. He was also able to solve the Locatelli because the first 60 minutes of Locatelli were horrible. The 30 minutes of the second or the last 30 minutes of Locatelli were much better. Thanks to Locatelli, probably yes, but especially thanks to Winston Wolf, Angel Di Maria. A Locatelli that will have to show these last 30 minutes versus not because he will not have the opportunity to do it in the Derby della Mole versus Torino because he is suspended. I could potentially go in all the details details of the game of yesterday showing you so many different graphics but I just want to thank again Francesco Zenzola from Juventus that with four pictures will show you how difficult and horrible the game of yesterday was after the 1-0 of Juventus. Juventus that was really at a certain moment and I'm not scared to say pathetic. If we a lot of time are speaking about parking the bus, yesterday we totally parked it and we were totally confused and we were scared of Spezia, something that can't be repeated at all. You see on the first picture the three central defenders defending the goal but also Locatelli that is on the line. If you look at the second picture you see how many of the Juve players, eight Juve players that are defending at the 53rd minute are defending Spezia something totally not understandable if you are called Juventus if you are representing La Vecchia Signora it's not over eh? because a few minutes later you see we are playing with a five-man defense with Locatelli and Fagioli Fagioli that entered and play only defensively because that was, was, was asked to him by Max Allegri look at that seven defenders seven defenders 
and you even have two more that are behind the line nine players behind the ball disgusting absolutely not okay absolutely not something that we can't repeat if we play like that versus not they will kill us they will totally kill us and then you also see yeah, from the moment that we want to go in counter-attack something that happened so many times this season you see that we are left alone with Kostic, Vlaovic and Di Maria and you have no Juve player that are supporting them we are there alone yesterday we played for large parts of the game with a four-man defense with a quadrado that was not able to go up the Shilo that entered and did the same role staying in the back with only Kostic on the left side that was able to go up luckily Kostic in the first half was founding a, su a successful dri um, assist ninth assist of him let's speak about Perin Perin with the highest percentage of saves 83 percent in Serie A from all goalkeepers we have the luxury to have a fantastic second goalkeeper yes I'm saying second goalkeeper because goalkeeper is a really sensitive role where you have one a number one and then you have a number two Perin said I am training every single day as if I was the number one that winning mentality that he gained over the years is actually making him performing even better the best season of Perin with Juve without any doubt I can say that this season Perin is much better than Chesney. Chesney is still a reliable goalkeeper. Yes, he conceded these five goals versus Napoli, the three versus Atalanta, but still a reliable number one. But Perin is doing a fantastic season. Is it the moment to change? I will be, again, controversial. I don't know. I don't know if it's the moment because you have goalkeepers. We saw how many damage that it caused to Donnarumma last year in competition with Navas. We saw it also last year with Handanovic and with Onana. We saw it so many times in the history of football. When you have two goalkeepers competing, you have a big problem. Perin accepted to be the second goalkeeper that is ready. This is his role. I saw some people saying Chesney is old, he's 32, Perin is 30, there are two years of difference. Perin accepted it, but he's ready to be the number one. Of course, he would be happy to play every single game from the start, but he accepted it. We have to accept to see Perin as a second goalkeeper being ready to play. When the moment will be to play Perin, we are sure that he will deliver this performance. And that's what's making me already happy. Then, next season is another story. Let's see. Gazzetta dello Sport was speaking about Di Magia La Juve va. Uh, Di Maggia because of course uh, we already spoke about him what a fantastic player that yesterday he said after two assists I wanted that goal I needed that goal that has been said and now he's saying focus on not because we have to go there and we have to qualify for the round of 16 Allegri is making me scared of course because he's saying yes we are a bit more happy or at least the title of Gazzetta is saying più Allegri per l'Europa we are a bit more happy a bit more tranquilly for Europa but he said yesterday in not it has to be like a final and you know that when you went to this playing finals guys I'm not that much reassured especially if Federico Chiesa is a doubt to play that game if it's not there another player will play of course but missing Federico Chiesa could be a big problem for Juventus. Anyway, let me know all your comments. Don't forget to put a maximum of likes, subscribe to the channel. Grazie, forza. Juve.